I, I, fi I finally come to accept that I hate all alcohol except for wine and white Russians. Really? Really? You, my friend, have have got to try at least, like, a Johnny-approved beer someday. The, I, the only beer that I ever drink, because it's all my friends buy, is, like, like the crappy beers, that, the, the, the crappy <laughs> frat house beers, like yeah, Coronas man. and Pabst and all yeah, that it's, shit. It, it's not cool. That, sh that shit is not cool. Like, that's, like, don't get me wrong. I, I can drink that shit. I'll drink it if I have to. But that's not beer, even. That's almost like a drink in and of itself. Like it has, it has no comparison to like good beer. Like it's, it's like, it'd be like if you if you liked vodka and hated gin. It, it's 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 like a completely different thing. It's like sure they're both like forty percent. They'll get you fucked up. It's just they like fermented orangutan piss. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. The Benson Boos Party Cast, starring Jesse Wood. It's time to shit and Johnny Old School. I swear to God, that's mayonnaise on my pants. The Bits and Booze Party Cast, the only podcast that calls your mom back the next day. But you know, I will say this, that after after getting into beer a little bit more, like I used to always piss all over American beer and just say it was like watered down horse shit, and really, a lot of it is, but it's not like we don't have that in Canada to an extent too, right? But the thing is, some of the best craft breweries are in fucking America. Some of the fucking best. Like, some of the best craft beers I've ever had are coming from America. So I can no longer, I can no longer completely deny that uh, America doesn't make good beers. Like, they have their piss water, but, for example, Amagang Brewery out of Cooperstown, New York, they make this beer called uh, the Three Philosophers, which is, like, this fucking dark, fucking delicious, meaty ale. It's, like, I don't know, fucking 10% or something like that, 12 bucks for, like, a bottle. That stuff is fucking amazing so I've, I've changed my tune i can no longer say that america doesn't know how to bake beer because some some of you guys definitely do america fuck yeah i just got just the fucking the bushiest beard right now have you seen my beard lately i've not seen a recent beard no man i'm gonna it's not the biggest it's ever been it was pretty big like like around like sometime <laughs> like oh, i remember that like i think like great. i think like late 2012 my beard was pretty big yeah but uh this beard that i got going on right now it's getting there uh inches would you measure your beard length it's like uh i don't know it's Is like it longer than your penis no that's, no it's not that's impossible <laughs> I'm not fucking well played, Gandalf. Sir. Well played. I want to. I'll send you a video real quick of me having a, a, my current beard. This is from like yesterday. This sounds wonderful. I did, it was it was a Metal Gear review, and I couldn't post it on my actual channel because my channel's fucked up forever. I see. I don't know if this is officially podcast started, but whatever. We're we're fucking. I'm recording. I've been recording the whole time, so. Yep. What the fuck is happening? Yep. Oh my god. No. <laughs> I went on the guy's site and it started playing music at me and it wouldn't stop, like, even after I left the page. Fail. Fail. And I died. One day, you're going to have a new computer that does not run Vista. This computer is so bad. Yeah. It's like, it's not even like a joke anymore. It's like... No, it's, it's I, like serious. It, this is like, yeah. this is affecting the quality of your life and something needs to be done about it. Like, I only use it at this point for editing because yeah. I don't have editing software on my Mac and I just use the Mac for everything else. Dude, like we need to start some kind of campaign to just get you just a stable working better computer. Like it's not going to cost that much, but something like that has to happen. Like if I were there, I would guide you to the process of like reinstalling like the, the operating system. You'd get, you know, put Windows 7 on it, yeah. something like that. Well, I was going to ask one of these days to help me find a free stolen editing program for the Mac, because I've been using for that way. Mac, I, I would have no idea. Um, oh Jesus! Yeah, Fucking I, Macs I, can't do a goddamn thing. No, I hate it, them. They definitely can. I just know nothing about modern day Macs at all, so I, I would not be the person to ask about it. I still recommend that you just like save up eight hundred bucks and get yourself a new PC. It will change your life. Here's me. Just being a faggot with a beard. I don't, 
What the fuck am I doing? Fat I'm just like faggot. showing. Doing a fat okay. faggot trade. Trading pictures of beards. Oh, okay. This is your newest beard. My newest beard. The newest <laughs> in a long line. Of beard models. I fucking oh. hate. I hate it. I don't even want to have a beard right now, but I have to because it's like. I wanted to have a mustache for a video that I've been planning. Yeah. And I don't want to have to grow a mustache from start because that'll take even longer once I get around to it. So I have to grow the beard and then trim it to a mustache is what my plan was. Right. But I just keep pushing the damn thing back, so I'm just stuck with this beard for all time. <laughs> and I hate it. You know, I bet if you shave that off and put it up for auction on eBay and made one video about it, you would get at least one bid for it. I bet I, I hate having a beard. I hate it. It makes my face look like extra fat, like fucking Will Riker. And it's just... <laughs> Wait, Will Riker was a fucking badass. Yeah, but when he grew his face pussy. Yeah, but when he grew a beard, he got fat. Like really, like really? if you watch, if you watch like season seven of Next Generation, Riker is like the stoutliest gentleman you've ever seen. I don't know. He was still getting all the space pussy. Yeah, that, oh, yeah, like, yeah, that tall, he's... dark, bearded fucking space guy for yeah, something else. He's, he's a it. he's a space guy. Yeah, space guys, you can't. You can be as fat as you want. Yeah. And still get to push it. He's got, he's got like the best position in all of Starfleet because okay, for what like he's not the captain, so he doesn't have all the entire responsibility. He's like the fucking I don't know vice president of the Enterprise. He's like the fucking number two, fucking drunk. I don't remember exactly what his position is, but <laughs> he's the fucking number two. So he still has like tons of power and shit. But he gets to be the good looking one who like he gets he gets a little more time off, right? He's got all the power and and position associated with the position of just full on fucking captain. But he can play around a little bit in his personal life, just a slight amount more. And nobody else, nobody else in the entire Star Trek universe is basically in that exact position. Yeah. You know, because every is. every time Picard tries to have fun or kick back and relax, he ends up getting tortured for a month or like yep. sent off into a whole other life yeah. inside oh, a cube. Four lights. <laughs> I like Star. He gets his ass kicked many a times. I heard something like that, the episode with, like, Locutus, like, where he turns into, like, fucking Locutus. Um, mm -hmm. I heard that was, like, one of the most, um, like, watched, like, uh, episodes on daytime TV or, like, nighttime TV or whatever, like, of all time. I mean, like, any show. Yeah, the Next Generation was, like, crazy good. Like, I haven't, even watching it back now, it's still, well, it's super good. Yeah, man. Yeah. I did that, like, a couple months ago. I watched it back. Some of the this... 90s decor really stands out these days, though. Like, some of the pantsuits and, like, their fucking silver shit. And, like, oh, yeah. And, like, and all the hair other shit. hairstyles. Of yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty funny to see sometimes. But, like, it never really detracts from, like, the actual... The, the story of the episode, you know? It's it never distracts you enough to, to take you out of the action, so... Ah, Guinan's stupid, gaudy, Afro-American <laughs> early 90s hats. <laughs> I'm going to say this right now. For some reason, I've just simply never really liked Whoopi Goldberg. I have nothing really? against her as a person. Whoopi I know she's Goldberg! Very, I know Whoopi she's Goldberg! She's very popular, and that, like a lot of people just absolutely love her, but I honestly don't understand the appeal, and I just, I've never well, really found her entertaining. I like her. I'm pretty sure that she's evil and she worships Satan. <laughs> uh, but well, that's, I think that's a prerequisite of and I like her in Hollywood. Movies. You have to sign that blood contract with the devil. I think I'd she sold her eyebrows to huh. the devil. She sold her eyebrows to the devil? <laughs> For eternal blackness. <laughs> I have no idea how to respond to that. She will forever be the most blackest person in the history. <laughs> the most blackest. She's one of the few black people in Star Trek, though, other than Worf. Yeah, because in the Star Trek future, you know, society is a utopia, so most of the black people have been wiped out. <laughs> Wait, is, is it racist to, like, think that, like, all the all the Klingons in Star Trek were like mostly played by black actors, and they're like they're like all warlike and violent and shit. Is there some like some racism that Gene Roddenberry was trying to get to with that? Is he, like, yeah. is he a closet racist? That was the whole point of Star Probably Trek from the beginning to to sneakily insert racism into the lives of America. I knew it, that bastard. What are, what are we? T is, is this the podcast? Have we started? I the guess. Podcast? I guess. Welcome everybody. It's, we're back. We're That's back. Right. That's right. That's right, motherfuckers. We're fucking back. The bits and booze. Back, bitch. Bits and booze podcast. You guys missed us. <laughs> I know. I know. At least one person missed us. I don't know who it is, but there's probably somebody who was like, "Hey, these fuckers are doing this shit again." Sweet. I'll listen to this fucking crap for a while. And why not? Why shouldn't you? 
because you're a lonely, sad fucking bastard just like we are, and you have nothing fucking... I don't know what I'm doing with my fucking life. It's like, it's like the 25th of March, right? And it's like, I still have that Patreon thing, so I've, I've been, like, sort of making money off of that, right? But it's monthly, so if you don't do anything in a month, you miss out on all the, yep. the money that you could have gotten. Yep. And I haven't done shit this Lazy month. fuck. And I have, like, a week to, to make a video or else I don't eat. You better fucking get on that, you lazy son of a bitch. Mm. People keep vying for my attention. I oh, I, oh, so now it's, it's other people's fault. No, no oh, you, well, playing. yeah, it is. It's mostly Brony's fault. It always really? comes back to Brony's. Really? And I gotta tell you, my most recent horror story, the most recent reason that I'm angry at Brony's and I hate them forever and I can't wait to be done with them forever! <laughs> you hear that? I know you, some of you faggots are listening. I'm using you. Pretty soon I'll be done with you forever, okay? Okay? <laughs> Fucking, I'm going back to the broken down geeks with video games, Johnny Old School. Yeah, that's right. I'm a Johnny Old School guy. You know who else was a Johnny Old School guy? Brock Lesnar. And he's split just like I'm splitting. But the difference between me and Brock is that when I split, I'm taking the WWE title with me. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> that was some CM Punk. I sort of lost my train of thought when I was <laughs> the wrestling. Uh, it came through. It came through, my friend. <laughs> what happened that made... Oh, yeah, okay. Bronies. So it's like the last the week of March. Done with them. And I'm really trying to sit down and trying to focus and get some shit out so that I, so that I can have some money so that yep. I can live this month and keep saving up to get my ass out of this hellhole. Yep. So, so I'm trying to fucking focus, and it's hard because I got, like, I got this, like, motivation block. I don't feel like doing shit, you know? I don't get writer's block ever because I'm a genius, and the ideas never fucking course, stop. But, but the I, but it's just, like, the ideas are so much that they get overwhelming, and I get to a point where I can't fucking do anything. You just have to masturbate them all out. Yeah, exactly. You just have so to like, jack off, like, for six or seven hours and then just sleep. So I'm, I've been trying really hard to get focused on this shit and get it done. And uh, one of my brony friends... Ugh, that sounds so awful to say. <laughs> One of my friends who happens to also be a part of the same circle jerk, he messages me on Friday or Saturday or something, and he's like, "Hey, I'm doing, I'm being, I'm in a two-day uh, live stream for charity. You should come join us." And I'm like, "Okay, whatever. I don't know what's charity for. It's like it's a charity. This girl set up a live stream yeah. for this friend of hers. He's yeah. he's got like autism or something, and um." And he's trying to get into art school, doesn't have any money, they didn't want to give him a disability scholarship or whatever, so... Right. And now, so, like, I don't know who this kid is, I don't know him, and I don't really believe in college, but, you know, nobody should be denied those opportunities just because they're different or disabled or autistic, so I figured, okay, I'll hop on this stream, and I'll try to, I'll try to send some people this way and try to do my best for the Lord, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I hop in the stream, um... Of course, nobody in the stream knows who the fuck I am because I get no goddamn respect. Know where I go, despite the no fucking respect. gold no. that I consistently drop on people's heads. Despite my obvious talent and my obvious genius, nobody knows who I am. I'm constantly disrespected. And, you know, at this point in my life, I'm at a point in my life where I've seen... I, I've, I've validated to myself that I am capable of great things and I know exactly what I'm worth. And at this point in my life, uh, the whole getting treated like a black sheep wherever the fuck I go thing is getting really fucking old to me. <laughs> you know, after 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 a good 25 years, I'm just about fucking sick of that shit. And I'm pretty much at the point where I fucking demand respect or else I blow a gasket everywhere I fucking go. So, of course, I get on this live stream and nobody fucking knows who I am. But, uh, but you know, whatever, fine. I'm Jesse Wood. It's for charity. So I go into my whole spiel. I do my thing. I do the gimmick. The fucking, hey, look at me. I'm the best. I'm super cool. I'm going a mile a minute. I'm improving all this fucking gold that I do, you know. And I'm on that live stream for eight hours over two days. Yeah. And I'm there. And, every, and I'm fucking entertaining people. I'm telling jokes. I'm telling stories, I'm singing songs, I'm playing guitars, I, I, I'm reading excerpts from Fifty Shades of Grey, I'm doing voices, I'm doing impressions, yeah. I'm doing all my shit, I'm going a mile fucking minute, I'm not stopping, constantly entertaining for the whole fucking eight hours I'm on this, and that shit gets, gets fucking tiring, but I'm a pro, 
I do it, and not really? only am I able really? to do all this fucking shit without fucking break, making everyone laugh, making everyone crack up constantly, keeping it entertained, sharing the live stream on my Facebook, my Twitter, all this stuff, and not only that, but I am also, I am also the only person on the stream who keeps trying to bring it back to the kid with autism and trying to remind people that it's for charity and to donate. I'm the only one who keeps bringing it up on top of all this, so it's like I'm, I care more than these people who started the fucking thing. I'm the most professional guy on there. I'm kicking ass and taking care of business and rocking and rolling the way only Jesse Wood can. And after all of it, so it, it's, in, it's, it's been like eight hours of me doing this over two days. Did you raise any money for the fucking kid? Yeah, I posted on my Facebook, and I got some people to donate. Nice. And uh, So it was all worth it. Yeah, so I'm I'm there. And and, and finally, uh, someone was saying something at, near the end of it, like, yeah, uh, shame, shame we couldn't get any big names on here. And, I, <laughs> you and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, oh, because anyone's bigger than me. And one of these smart aleck motherfuckers, one of these smart ass fucking nobodies, these people aren't fucking famous, they're not nobody special, I'm the biggest cat on there. So one of these fucking smart ass nobodies thinks to go, oh yeah, who are you again? <laughs> After eight motherfucking hours out of my time, out of my work, I'm taking time out of my work that I'm trying to make money for myself to live off. I'm taking time out for charity, and my thanks is... Who is this guy again? I still love you, Jesse. Oh, I... don't all fucking thank me at once, you cocksuckers. I got the fuck out of there. I'm like, okay, time to hit the dusty trail. You people are welcome, by the way, for me coming on here and saving the, the stream and curing autism forever single-handedly. You're welcome, okay? Now I'm taking my ball and going home because you Fucks don't deserve me, just like nobody in the Brony community fucking deserves a man of my obvious genius and talents. Wow. So I fucking bolted and I split those fucking cack suckers. <laughs> God damn it. No respect at all. No respect anywhere I go. It's ridiculous. It makes me sick to my stomach. Yeah, and I was just watching. France I've ever hear, heard you go on before. And just today, I was just watching some of my, uh, you know, my, uh, my Brony videos that I've been making, my older reviews. Because I haven't seen them in, in a couple months since I made them. I've forgotten. And I was watching them back, and I realized, holy shit, I forgot how goddamn good these are. I really am that damn good, and I really am the best there is at this, and I get no fucking respect. So fuck all those people. I hope the little autistic kid fucking dies of autism. <laughs> oh. I hope all the autistic kids everywhere die of dude, autism. Dude. I hope they get beaten up by the football teams in their high schools. I hope nobody ever donates to any charity Don't. ever again for the rest of time. Fuck them. <laughs> Man. You should probably start smoking marijuana. Okay. Or, or, or something. One more fucking person in my goddamn life tells me that's fucking shit. Oh, <laughs> you're so high strung. You need to start smoking dope, man. You need to relax, no, man. No, Smoke you, you some really... beer for now you want to smoke some pot, man? Fuck you! I don't need no, to smoke you... God damn it. I'm so fucking sick of stoners. Do you want to get me started on that fucking spiel? I've fucking heard it. Stoner. I've heard so it, man. I'm just saying. This I, stoner I think culture that is infecting this, the, the Western no, none culture. None of that like matters. None of that matters. It's like, it's like a cancerous tumor. You can't change it. It's there. It's there it's already. The Western it's culture. There. There's it's no reason to get mad at it. It's there. Boy, all society makes me sick to my fucking stomach. I hate stoners. I hate every mother. I hate autistic kids who try to go to college. I hope... Oh, why don't... Why, if the fucking autistic kids want... Why don't the autistic kids start smoking dope, huh? Maybe that'll cure them, huh? Everybody suggests that I should start smoking dope. Everybody... Everything I do, everybody comments on my videos. Oh, this guy must be drunk. This guy must be high. <laughs> because it's unfathomable to me in my idiotic, fried mental state that anybody could just be funny and entertaining by themselves. You must be high. You must be stoner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sucking dick all day. That's what we do. We Fuck dicks all day, motherfucker! God damn it, I hope everyone fucking dies on this planet. I'm so fucking I, I sick. I stand by my original statement. Fuck should, stone. You should, you should come out to Canada, and you should, uh, should get a big glass bong, and just put on, like, some fucking Bill Burr or some shit, and just fucking Not smoke it up. on this earth that could get me to smoke marijuana? I, I probably could. No, you couldn't. I don't know, man. You just challenged me, so now you double can't. <laughs> no, it's not. About, it's not about a challenge. It's just saying if you were out in Canada, and I had some, I'd probably like at least make an effort to like smoke some with you. I'm not saying I could 
like completely get you to do that, but like I smoked crack uh, uh, before I smoked marijuana. <laughs> I would definitely not be smoking crack. I would inject heroin That's into my eyeball before I smoked a blunt. Well, maybe I could. Um, yeah, I got nothing. Stoners, I hate their culture. I hate their jokes. I hate that stupid little obnoxious stoner laugh that they all have. The same laugh. <laughs> <laughs> that Jeez, one. fucking Christ. They all sound the fucking same. They all look the same. They all smell the same. They all sound the same. All these fucking kids in their teens, and I'm talking kids from the ages of 13 to the age of 65, they're all in their teens. They all look the fucking same. You know, they're all these fucking, either they're kids with these fucking sideways flat brimmed caps and these fucking sleeveless shirts and these big fucking hoodies that are eight sizes too big for them, walking around with their little caterpillar pubescent fucking pedophile mustaches going, <laughs> you need to smoke some dope, man. Are you high? <laughs> or, or they're the fucking 58 year old fucking baby boomer cocksuckers with their fucking, who think they're going to fucking ride around on a motorcycle and be tough because they're fucking passionate their prime and they can't ex accept the fact that they're fucking one foot in the grave and nobody fucking cares about their irrelevant fucking generation anymore. God damn it. Dude. Welcome Jesse, to the party cast. Please tell me about something that makes you happy. Sincerely, your friend Johnny. What's the booze party cast? <laughs> Have a gay old time with my best friend Johnny Old School. That's right. I wish I had more beer. I wish I, I had know. more box wine. I know. I'm so fucking sick of winter. I just need to say I'm so so done with winter. I was done with winter a few months ago. This is fucking retarded. Living yeah. in the city is absolute fucking insanity. Because it here. felt like winter was going away. For like a couple of weeks. It's like, oh, fucking finally winter is over. And it's fucking back. It's fucking completely back. It's cold as fucking shit outside. There's fucking snow everywhere. The streets are fucking icy again. Like, it, all that fucking shit was like starting to melt and almost going away. And it's like, no, fucking winter round fucking two here in goddamn Calgary. I'm starting to fucking lose my mind out there. I cannot deal with fucking winter anymore in this town. Like, it's, it has to fucking end. And I'm, I look at my fucking forecast on my phone every goddamn day. Let's look at it right now. Let's let's fucking see what the winter's gonna be fucking like right now. Is that minus nine outside? Okay, that's not bad. Oh no, it's actually minus thirteen. It just updated now. It's fucking minus thirteen outside. It's the twenty fifth of fucking March. It's gonna be my birthday in about a week. And it's fucking snowy and fucking icy outside. What we got for tomorrow? Minus eight, minus thirteen. Oh, minus sixteen on, on Thursday. That's gonna be good. Oh, and, and the snowflakes are, are the big snowflakes. See on the app it shows like the regular size snowflakes. On Thursday, we got, like, the giant-sized snowflakes just showing on this. Seriously. Fuck Canada. I sent you Fuck a Canada. It's bullshit sometimes. I need the fucking summertime to happen very hey, Johnny, I crocheted you a mind. scarf, and I sent it to you. It was all me and nobody else. Yo, what about the stars? I crocheted you a scarf. Oh, oh, you crocheted that. Yeah, and I sent That's it all by myself, and nobody else helped. That is very impressive. You have uh, you have lovely uh, handwriting and uh, oh hold on I, ha I have the let me see what it says here. Hope this keeps you warm so you can go to the beer store without freezing. But then it says in parentheses, tell him it's from me to dash Jesse. That's yeah. Like that sounds like somebody else wrote that and you were tacking on the sentiment. No, Cheap no. Heartless bastard. Hey, a great writer writes in reverse. Last chapter to first chapter. <laughs> So therefore, I wrote the last part. But hey, Johnny, I made this, and then I oh, hope it keeps you warm. And I wrote it in my ex-girlfriend's handwriting because I know that you would like the image in your mind of a pretty girl sending you a note. Definitely, I definitely like that image. Because I know you so well. And I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna stick with my own fantasy then, over over the, the apparent reality that's being. And then I rubbed my penis on it. <laughs> oh God. Classy as hell. Classy as hell. <laughs> funny. You're a terrible person. I hate you. Um, Friendship over. Uh, my First ex -girlfriend, party cast ever. My ex-girlfriend, uh, when we were still together, or maybe after we broken up, I don't know. Our relationship's pretty much been the same since I met her. It hasn't really changed. I, we like never, we, I mean, we never really stopped getting along, so. But, uh, 
You know, she has that store in Etsy where she she sells hats and stuff, and she crochets and stuff. And yep. She gets orders from all these fucking cunts from my high school who I hate. <laughs> and who uh, used to know her and shit. Yeah. Who and, also and, like have crushes on her and stuff. And there was this <laughs> one girl. Who, shit. There was this one girl who ordered a hat who I really fucking can't stand. Who's really always been a complete fucking cunt to me for no fucking reason. I think, I think there's plenty of reasons to be a cunt to you because there's no fucking reason in a leather jacket than I ever will look. So fuck you for that. Well, that's not any. Shit. Well, I'm I'm trying to get fat, so maybe. Yeah. Still though, fuck you. But you know, you know I ain't never been rude to no females sober. I ain't <laughs> never sober. hurt nobody. I, <laughs> I ain't never hurt nobody on I'm purpose. I ain't never been <laughs> bad to the. But you know, one of these fucking high school cunts who thinks she's better, fucking younger than me. It's just the thought of someone younger than me, trying to fucking have an attitude. Is that what makes you're angry about. So, anyways, you're more successful. Well, she's not more successful Daddy than me. She, she's not more. She's not successful. She's a fucking girl. But but is she prettier than you? Fuck no. <laughs> well, I would have she's, to judge that. Have I'll, to judge I'll put it this way: she's one of that she is. She's one of those sixes who thinks she's an eleven. I don't know how to picture that scale. Cause for me, it basically stops at nine. Well, whatever. Point is, she ordered the hat. <laughs> She ordered a hat. How dare so she? Before, before uh, my lovely ex girlfriend sent it out to her, I came on it. Really? She put it on her head. Fuck her. <laughs> the Bits and Booze Podcast. Okay? So, all these fucking cunts who think they can get away with being a bitch to me in high school, you're all wearing my cum in your hair. That's what that was. Fuck. Deal with it, whores. I don't know. I kind of enjoyed it. It wasn't that bad, to be honest. I told you, motherfuckers, I was evil. Yeah. Everybody forgot. Everybody, motherfuckers forgot I about Dre. It. I was expecting it. Nowadays, everybody wants to talk. They got something to say, but nothing comes out when they move the lips. Just a bunch of gibberish. And motherfuckers act like they forgot about the footwear man. Mm. I thought you were going to say Dre. I'm the fucking devil, okay? I told you all I'm the devil. I'm the double devil. I'm the triple devil. The quad devil. That's the I'm devil on a motherfucking double. ATV. Like the whole 666 thing, that's three numbers. So quad devil, adding another six on there, doesn't doesn't really work. Dude, the quad devil is the devil times four. No, I'm just saying, I think the... The quad devil's got four up. testicles like a Krogan. Shepard a quad! But how would, you, how would you use the satanic number if you were quad devil? You could only go to a triple. Uh, the satanic number is just propaganda that was invented by hippies in the... In the 1930s? During <laughs> in the, the 1930s, part. during the rape of Nanking <laughs> by the there. evil I general Kangas. In a past life. <laughs> I hope everybody unsubscribes from me and kills themselves. <laughs> well, I offered to do the first, but... I'm supposed to get my shower fix in the next day or two, and I want to have at least one, like, half an hour long, amazing hot shower. You ever just have that, that thought where, like, you ever just, like, standing in public in, like, a mall or something, and you just look around, Basically, and you have that thought, thought, like, why don't you people oh. all just kill yourselves? Um, I don't, no, I, I can't say, actually. I think that every time I'm outside. Well, one time I was in a mall... And standing, like, across one of these little archways, like, down the core in Calgary. And just kind of sitting there, like, zoning out. And, like, you know how when you sit by, like, a fucking river, you just hear that, like, bubbling of sound of water? Kind of zoning out in this place. Like, all these, like, hundreds of people around me. All their voices and everything. It's, it almost started, like, melding into, like, that kind of same feeling or sound. And I wasn't, I wasn't drunk. I wasn't on any fucking drugs. It was just me fucking sitting there in the mall. But it was just kind of, like... I just started to, like, kind of turn to my focus to just that sound of all these voices together where you can't actually hear what any individual person is saying. It's just this, like, cacophony of, like, just human interaction from, like, hundreds, if not, like, thousands of people around you. And it kind of, like, made me feel the same way as I did, like, when I would, like, sit by a fucking river and hear that water sound. It was, like, the, like, the fucking melodic human flow. It was, it was a fucking Ugh. beautiful experience. I don't know, man. The thought that there's, like, other people on the earth makes me... <laughs> want to fucking blow up the earth. 
Well, truth be told, if I'm an honest person, there's there's many a times when I've thought about blowing up various places. I mean, who hasn't? Honestly, there's 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 some things out there, and your first reaction is just like, oh, we should we should just blow it up, just fucking blow that shit up. But, yeah, you know, that's my first, second, and third reaction. It's part it's part of being human. <laughs> You can't not want to just blow something up. Sometimes. I have to meditate on a mountain for days. Can honestly, say they thought about detonating something in the proximity of something else. I have to like fast for weeks and meditate on a mountain before I can even think that maybe something shouldn't be blown up. <laughs> <laughs> kind of know that feeling sometimes, man. Kind of do. It's difficult. It's so difficult. I just like sometimes I'm just like in my car. And there was, like, traffic around me, and I'm just like, how can this many human beings exist on this fucking planet? You know what's a weird thought? When you're driving down the freeway, like, you, every car you glance at, they have this whole insane, large, intricate life that's every yeah, just detail I always fucked think up that. as yours. Like, every single one of these fucking people has that entire insane fucking crazy shit going on with them. Yeah, like, but at least they don't entertain what... bronies for a living. Well, yeah, at least, at least. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Ah, damn it. <laughs> my little pony, beautiful pony. It's so fucking, it pisses me off because, like, so many people write me off and, like, don't pay attention to what I'm actually saying. And they, like, write me off like, oh, he's mean or he's insensitive or he's a bad guy. I wonder like, why they do that. No, 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 no. Without paying I, attention I enough to realize the real reasons that I'm a bad insane. guy. Because, no, it's like, I look, I'm evil. Okay, but I <laughs> want people to understand and respect no, you're not. the correct ways that I'm evil. Bolshevism. Shit, Bolshevism. What is Bolshevism? Bol Some Russian well, philosophical it's, it's fucking shit. Mr. Burns. Bolshevism. Shit, Bolshevism. You lost me. I'm sorry. You broke me. I did. But you enjoyed the process, so the will no. back tomorrow. I'm <laughs> saying, I'm saying, what are you... Fucking bronies gonna get a life. Never. <laughs> get, they already have a life. Kill yourselves. <laughs> get a life and then end it quickly. <laughs> That's the two step process for you every brony to them. fix their lives. Step you one, get a life. All. Step two, end it. You love That's my advice for all bronies. That's like, that's Jesse Wood's version of just, just a big digital hug to all of you. <laughs> Keep peeing your butts. I'm hugging them with hatred. Definitely in your butts. Fuck. You know what? I'm making bronies better. Anyone who watches my videos comes away a better person. They come away smarter. They come away enlightened. Anyone who pays I attention enough videos and gives time. it enough of a chance to learn something, they all. I, you know what I am? I'm like the a modern at, Jesus, but not I'm, in that religious way. I'm the yes, exactly. I'm the <laughs> Asperger martyr. Okay. <laughs> oh. I'm taking the autism Dude. into me. I'm taking the autism out of the bronies and into me. I'm remove. I'm curing them of their affliction and taking it into myself. I see. And I'm making them all better people, and I get no respect. Black no sheep respect everywhere I go. Everybody you thinks drowning in horseshoes is so mean, so insensitive, such a prick. Oh, he doesn't respect his fans. Let me tell you something. I respect my fans more than any of the other brony reviewers. You know why? Because I respect them enough to be real with them and tell them the truth. These other phonies out there who try to be all clean and PC and try to put on a happy face and go, hey, yeah, yeah, you bronies and derpy hoops. <laughs> they hate you more than I do because I've talked to those motherfuckers. I've you talked to what? them in private and in person. I think you're actually right when you say that. I think you're I actually am right hitting on something that. fairly pertinent. Like, that's that's a little bit more than just, like, like, hey, we're goofing around fucking saying hating bronies. Yeah, I think you're actually onto something with that, man. It is. I know I seek to entertain and make people laugh, but I also seek to educate. And I'm doing it slowly to anyone who listens. But the problem is nobody wants to open that book. They all want to judge the cover. Nobody wants to pay attention long enough to learn something. But those that do walk away better for it. I see. And that's why I'm a genius. And that's why I'm the best there is <laughs> at what I goddamn do. No respect. Well... You know, and these other fucking. I was gonna phones. say something, but I won't. What are you gonna say? Nothing. 
You know, I've talked to them. They're all, they complain about bronies in private just as much as I do in public. They're, oh, man, these fans are so autistic and so stupid. The comments are, make me sick. I hate these people. I can't wait to be rid of this. Yeah, and I'll, I'll give you this. Like, I think it's a better thing for a person to be actually real than... Yeah. Then and and, and, and then you see those people's videos, and it's all like, I love my fans, and I'm so glad that I've got these many subscribers. <laughs> Please subscribe more. <laughs> you do love yours in a way, though. You fucking feed off that shit, and I know it. I feed off the money. You No, you fucking <laughs> feed off that shit. Part of you does. You cannot deny it. I hate it. You can't, well, you can't deny it, but I won't believe you. I'm trying to, like, train myself to, like, never interact with the fans ever, and it's hard that to like, stop happened. myself from doing it. It won't, be, it won't be fun for you anymore if you do Because there's never a time when interacting with the viewers yeah, is not the worst decision I've ever made in my life. disable all of your comments everywhere, if that's how uh, you feel. I, yeah, then, I then I'll start a, a Kickstarter because of how badly I'm getting bullied. And then <laughs> send me free God, money I... and free games. <laughs> and then I'll be the king of the I, shit pile. I donate to that Kickstarter. I give you at least $6. <laughs> Because I don't want to see you be bullied. Nobody deserves it. You know, no, my, you know, my fans are free to comment whatever they want and pick on me as much as they want, just as long as they know at the end of the day I'm fucking better than them. <laughs> well, I, if it makes you feel any better, I've never felt I was better than you. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, being this guy, Johnny Old School, you know, we go way back. This is you true. know, I, I remember one time... I went over to his house. It was about, it was about thirty of us wrestlers over yeah, at his yeah. house, and uh, his his mom. And you know, gosh, Johnny, I love your mom. I love it. You know, that was the day she made the dinosaur cake. You know, I sent her flowers one time, and you know, I think if I could have any mom in the world, I'd like to have your mom as my mom. But I, it was about thirty of us wrestlers, and Johnny's mom come down the steps, still in her bathrobe. <laughs> And she started making them sandwiches faster than submarine could, man. And she made them sandwiches for all us wrestlers. And that's why, Brett, I ain't gonna fight you for the Intercontinental title. Because I don't want to do that. I don't want to... I don't want to fight you, Brett. I've, uh, I've had a, a image of you freeze-framed on my uh, right monitor here for the entire time I've been talking to you. And it's almost like I, I think we got to add it in the fucking podcast. It's just like a freeze frame. It's right at three minutes and 45 seconds if you're drowning in footwear and ground zero's review. You're just basically turned over holding this red cup with a fucking eye patch on and your giant beard. <laughs> that's, just, that's exactly how I've been picturing you the entire time we've been talking. It's fucking brilliant. That's always how I should be. <laughs> yeah. That's, that, that, the that, shell necklace that's on, like, the fucking leather that's, jacket. That's you me and my like, natural state You look like right Solid there. Snake's nephew or something. <laughs> I look like Fat Big Boss. <laughs> Fatty Big Boss. I agree. That's going to be the title card for this one. Fatty Big Boss. Oh, boy Oh, oh boy oh. Boy, oh, look, oh. So, you know what really sucks? is like working until midnight or 1 o'clock and then having to sleep until 1 or 2. That is killing me. That sucks. I would far rather be doing that than not be actually making money to be able to fucking survive. Don't get me wrong, but fuck, that fucking sucks. Dude, fuck getting up in the afternoon and being up late. It's the worst. It's the pits. Yeah, yeah. it's like, hey, I get to see the sun for like three or four hours. Or like, that's like I'm like on your fucking day off. If I had it my way, I'd sleep like an old man. Just like go to bed at 9 p.m. and wake up at 6 every day. But yeah. I can't because I'm... I don't know, because I'm, I'm 24, and just my natural state is to sleep like a lion whenever I want and just plop down and spin up. <laughs> out for 18 hours at a time. And here we see the majestic Jesse Wood plop down in the savannah. Notice how his glorious manes flutter against his pirate eye patch. And that's another thing. I want to cut my hair, but I can't because I'm too fat. And I have to... <laughs> so you can't I... reach up there to your hair because you're... No, no, it's like that height... <laughs> It's like that high school mentality where I want to hide my fat face behind my hair and my bangs. I see. <laughs> just, I tried not eating garbage and getting out of the house. Dude, I, I don't eat anything and I edit all day. It's impossible. I'm telling you. Well, I'm too busy working on pony shit. Skills. It's the ponies. It's been two years of editing ponies. That's what caused it. Two years ago, I was 150 pounds. Problems again. I see. You lazy fuck. What? 
to blaming other people for your problems again. I'm not blaming other people. I'm blaming My Little Pony. Well, My Little Pony would exist outside of other people's influence creating and drawing and, and thus. Oh, Johnny, you're pissing me right off the bridge right now, boy. <laughs> I do my best. I do my best. Ah! Ah! <laughs> you ever see Devil's oh! Advocate? Candy what? Rose. Ah! Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. I did it again. Did you spill wine on your crotch? Nope. I got my microphone caught in my sweater as I was taking the sweater off up over the microphone. <laughs> The headphones, and I can't. Can't fuck. That's called a fail, in any language. Oh man. So, anyways, welcome everybody to the Bits and Booze Party Cast. Today, me and Johnny Old School are going to be talking about fireworks, fireworks, and ants, and ants. Fireworks and ants. You ever put a firework in an ant hill? I never did it because I respect Mother Nature. But I have heard that, that some I... little psychopaths used to hurt animals and blow up frogs and all that. It's sick shit. You know, I always I, hate... I will tell you a story about insects and fireworks, though. I had this one... I used to have, like, model rockets as a kid. You know, the kind you had the fucking hog stores and shit like that. And you'd launch them off and go up in the sky and pop out and parachute them down. And you fucking rebuild them and do that again and again. It's pointless, but it's fun for some reason. But I had one that, like, the nose cone was, like, big and orange, and, like, it had this, like, kind of, like, egg shape to it, and you could unscrew it, and you could put an egg in there, like, this, like, padding, and it was like, hey, look, with this padding, you can, like, launch an egg up in there, and, like, it won't break, and shit like that, and that was supposed to be something, I don't know, that was supposed to be cool or something, and I thought this one time, hey, I'm gonna gather up all these green stink bugs and put them in the top of that nose cone there, and send them off into space, you know, I was a fucking kid, I'm like, yeah, these stink bugs will be my, my fucking astronauts, my stupid fucking rocket, I launch them off. When it comes down and I open the cup, <laughs> these things have experienced so many fucking G-forces that it bounced around the inside like a million fucking times. Like you were taking like a maraca and just rattling around shit inside it. <laughs> they were just all splotches of bug guts like all around the fucking inside. Just fucking coated with fucking stink bug juice. Yeah. Needless to say, uh, they did not survive the Johnny Old School space program. Yeah. You see, I never, I never hurt... I never like tortured animals like one of these little freak kids... All do fucking, but I just killed them the old-fashioned way by making nail pets gun. out of them and then neglecting them. Ah, uh, so well, nail gun happens sometimes too. Ooh. You know, no. after smoking these e-cigarettes, I I cannot honestly recommend anyone smoke cigarettes ever again in my life. Everyone out there listening who fucking smokes cigarettes, get the fucking e-cigarette. Get a fucking good one. It'll fucking change your life. It's way better than smoking. Dude, I fucking don't think hate so, smoking. Yeah, like, like, yeah, like, being a non-smoker now, don't get me wrong, I vape this shit all the time, but it's like, hey, suddenly I'm not worrying about fucking ashes all over my computer fucking table. I don't smell like shit all the time. I don't have to Smokers fucking... are, like, mentally retarded. Cause it's I'm like... not going to say that. I have plenty of friends who I love dearly who are smokers. I'm not going to say that. I'm just saying to them, get on the fucking e-cigarette trolley because this shit is fucking incredible. It's like, oh, yeah, it, I look cool and I'm smoking a cigarette, but you fucking stink, motherfucker. You don't realize how much you stink. I didn't I didn't realize that until, like, I got on this fucking vape thing and, like, doing that for, like, even a week when people would come in from outside after having a cigarette at work, all of a sudden I would smell it and I'd be like, holy fucking shit, you think wrong. That's what I've been smelling like for like yeah. years. And it's like, you're hanging out with smokers as a non-smoker, and you're hanging out with them in the winter, and every five minutes, everybody come stand outside with me in the fucking cold so that I can fucking smoke because, God forbid, I go fucking five minutes without my precious little phallic symbol in my fucking mouth because I can't fucking take it or I get the jitters. You know, let's all go stand outside in the fucking cold. Or, you know, you're driving to someone who smokes in the cold, right? You're driving, and they got to roll the fucking window down in 90 degree below fucking weather because they got to smoke out the window and blow well, cold and fucking winter air in yeah. your face. When like I smoke that, and I was retard. driving, I wouldn't do that with, with people in the car. Like, obviously, I'd either, like, ask them or, like, I would 
yeah. know whether or not you I can't could. even hang out with a smoker because it's like every five minutes oh i gotta go outside i gotta smoke i gotta smoke i just can't fucking you know and you know the best thing that i ever saw in my life there was a wendy's in my town and in the wendy's the smoking section was a big glass box with a you door on it smoking sections there no smoking oh. indoors is outlawed now in Michigan, oh, okay thank god but yeah it was a big glass box, and those freaks had to sit in there like a fucking zoo. And everybody got to look at them and point and go, look at those stupid smoker idiots in there, and laugh and bring your kids and take pictures with their Polaroids and the flash bulbs. That's what I did. I took pictures of them, and I pointed, and I laughed because they're freaks. I went to Wendy's every other week like the freak show and watched those smokers in their little cage where they belong. Okay, I just sent you a picture over Skype. That's what I'm smoking these days, and that's the fucking future. It even looks futuristic. That's a that's a walkie-talkie. Yeah. You can also uh, control drone strikes with it. I knew it. Yeah. Yeah, man. This fucking shit is like... It's so much better. It's so much fucking better than smoking. And, and part, of the reason, part of the reason I know that it's better, despite how much I like it, is the fact that now you see tobacco companies and fucking lobbyists getting a little... Uh, a little fucking pissy about this whole thing and pro- like putting up propaganda articles like, yeah, some kid drank this nicotine liquid for one of those e-cigarettes and died. Four children have died by doing that so far. It's like, well, you probably had 100,000 children have died by getting the fucking the pill cabinet or out of the sink or like taking fucking Tylenol. But the fact that they make an article like that is uh, it's obviously fucking biased propaganda because fuck you. Can you be... Can you be straight edge and still drink sometimes? Because that's what I want to be. Why? Because I hate druggies and I hate smokers. And I hate stoners. So but I love there's, booze. There's a lot of people who do the same things I do that I wouldn't necessarily say I approve the lifestyle of or want to emulate, but I can still do the same substance of them, get completely different results and be a completely different person because of it. It's not like, not like drinking makes me emulate people who are going to some like shitty nightclub. Or not like taking LSD makes me some like burnt out self righteous fucking douchebag hippie who drives a Prius or some crap. Like you're always your own person, so I don't know. That's how I see it. You still experience I don't some know. of those things. In my experience, the average person is not their own person. The average person is a simple minded automaton fucking moron who lives only to regurgitate the thoughts and, uh, and beliefs of those around them and just fucking puke up their mindless, meaningless drivel all over and just drown the genius voices, the, the truly outstanding individuals, just drown them in their sludge and their toxic, stupid human filth. That's what the average person is. Just fucking whatever they can do to just fucking wrap them, just fucking like a, an, a blanket, a blanket just smothering the life out of those truly exceptional few individuals. Just fucking, just the I, tide of idiocy, just swarming like hornets and just stinging the life out of everyone who dares, you know, all of, every single nail that stands up has to get hammered down by the fucking tide of idiocy. <laughs> I, I, I have to disagree with you on my general perspective of, of the people out there. Like, I, I understand where you're coming from, but at the same time, I choose to see basically just a sea of people who are all growing and I try not to compare them to me or where I think they should be. I just see everybody as at some point where they can stand to be better along yeah, whatever path they're put on. And the problem that, is that relieves the, a lot of stress to be able to the see. The problem is like the that. average person only lives about 100 years, and most of those fucking freaks would need 1,000 years to grow into anything decent. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I think, I think the whole point of being here is to, like, just grow a little. Like, otherwise, like, what's the point? Like... I think that's, like, the main focus. And I, I don't think we should ever, like, focus on people having to, like, be perfect or act perfectly. Well, I know what the point is for people like it's, me. It's, na- it's naive to expect that it's of concrete. the human race, that we're never going to be like that. And if you, try to, if you try to think that, oh, everything has to be, like, you know, towards utopia, you're just going to fucking stress yourself out because we're, we're not going to get there in our lifetime. So it makes more sense to me to just understand that things are fucked up but still doing whatever you can for the next generation just, like, like make things just a little bit fucking better. Like, just realize that everyone's growing and just be like, okay, well, things are still going to be fucked up, but maybe by the time I die and I have kids or my friends have kids, maybe we'll have done enough where it's just, like, we're maybe to a little bit better place. And 
I think that's really the only thing we can expect out of life, and just do our part to do that. You know what I think? If we do that, if we take steps like that, and someone else, you know, the next generation continues it, and then the one after that continues it, like, maybe things will actually start to straighten out on this fucking planet, you know? But that, that'll that never happen if we, right now, just completely fucking give up. So. You know what I think is the meaning of life? Like, you know, people, you know, Pardon? people say, people say, uh, you know, make money, fuck bitches. They say that. Uh, I, I, I add a third step to that. My meaning of life is make money, fuck bitches, and disregard humanity. <laughs> where, where would you be without humanity, though? Happy. I don't believe that. If you're just, like, completely by yourself and no one knew you and you never knew anyone else. Well, at least there's the time to read books. Who, yeah, but no, but that, that would involve other people. So that doesn't count. You wouldn't, have, you wouldn't be able to have books. That was humanity. a Twilight Zone reference. So I'm yanking your chain. Oh I wouldn't God. read no oh, fucking... Damn. I wouldn't read no fucking books if I was the last man on earth. I'd go around and rape corpses. <laughs> Finally, time enough at last to rape all the corpses I want. Oh my god. Then I then I drop my glasses and they break and I can't tell the difference between a human corpse and a sheep corpse, oh, and that's the that's the suck. twist at the end. Would suck. Portrait of a man fucking a dead sheep. <laughs> he thought it was people, but it was actually a sheep. But what is the difference between man and beast in the Twilight Zone? Best episode ever. Blu-ray 2014. How come they don't make shows like that anymore? Like, just kind of creepy one-offs, you know? I, yeah, yeah. I mean, the la- I don't know. They had Are You Afraid of the Dark, which was sort of a Twilight Zone for kids back when I was... That? I no, that was when I was a little young. Yeah, uh, that, young that show was fucking awesome. The Midnight Society. Throw the fucking glitter, fucking sparkly shit on the flat. I don't know. They kind of do. It's just not as common. I mean, like, there was one a couple years ago that I can't remember the name of. That was, oh, that was pretty decent, I think. Yeah. Uh, American Horror Story is kind of like that. I mean, it's not like every episode is different, but every season is different. Right. I don't know. I think The Twilight Zone was just such an amazingly, like, well-crafted, well-written, like, perfect show that, like, TV had nowhere to go from there, so it just went, like, went straight to reality shows <laughs> that after that. Old man's television achievement. Yeah, after that, it was Twilight just straight Zone, to the gutter. Down, yeah. I, think, I think, like, it was, like, Twilight Zone, then, like, Batman the Animated Series, and then Hey Arnold, and then it was all downhill. For everything else <laughs> is just crap. Oh, Batman the Animated Series. That's the series that I've wanted to watch again for so long. Anytime I see, like, a picture of it on the internet, I'm just like... That show is good. I used to watch that after school all the fucking time. If you Every watch that show after. now as like an adult, it's yeah. just it's mind blowingly good. I bet it is. I fucking bet it is. Same with Hey Arnold and a lot of those old shows just get better as you age. Like yeah. people people say that it's nostalgia, but is it really nostalgia if you appreciate it more now That's than you exactly did as a kid? Because like as you get older, like you understand like how much effort goes into show like that. You have the voice actors, you start yeah. learning about the voice actors' lives, their careers, you start learning about animation, you start learning about the studio at the time. When you see all this come together yeah. and whatnot and these performances and come you together, also like, you also get, get an appreciation for, for, for just how much has been lost and how much in those old things isn't that you you, do, you don't have today. Yep. Like Batman the animated series. The th- the thing that sets Batman the animated series apart for me and all the old Back when uh, DC had their animated universe and all those shows, the Batman in that show was human in a way that the modern Batman is not. Yeah. yeah. Because now everything's grim, dark, and everything has to be edgy and, and mature and violent and yeah. And, and Batman, like you read a Batman comic nowadays, and it's like the character is broken because they've taken him so far in one direction. Yeah, yeah. It's like he's Batman is just like this complete sociopathic bully who just became. Batman to beat up criminals. Batman did not become Batman to beat up criminals. He became Batman to save people yeah. from becoming like him. And that's something that so many people lose sight of when they write for Batman nowadays. I mean, like, in the old Batman cartoons, you would have moments where, like, Batman is comforting a little girl as she's dying or something. Yeah. And, like, just, you don't have that anymore. Nowadays, it's yeah. all just, I'm going to beat the shit out of you, Joker, but then I'm going to leave you alive so you can kill more people because I'm a psychopath. Yeah. And it makes no sense. Like, nowadays, like, like, the thing, like, nowadays, like, in the old cartoon, the Joker used to, like, he could be really menacing, but he was also silly, and, like, he never went too far that he would, like, stretch it beyond, like, the suspension of disbelief, right? Yeah. For why Batman doesn't kill him. But nowadays, it's like, the Joker has murdered millions of people. Batman is a bad guy for not killing the Joker at this point. Yeah, pretty much. It's like, they, they, I wish they would take it back to, like, 
not 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 they don't have to like not completely campy like Adam West, but like there's got to be a middle ground. I get what you're saying too, because like don't get me wrong, I, I like the new Batman movies, but like they're they're completely gritty in a way that it feels like sep- it's separated from like kind of the Batman character that makes the most sense. Like yeah. it's almost like you can you can take a character and put him in a really ex- extreme realistic you know gritty situation. Or you can make it completely campy, you know, like the Adam West uh, 1960s show, which is all, you know, also amazing and has its appeal because it's fucking ridiculous and hilarious. But like when you find that middle ground for anything, but you know, in this instance, the Batman character, that's when it's that's when the character seems to work the best. And I think the animated series is a fantastic example of that because, like you said, you know, you see Batman comforting a child, or like even the uh, the whole like the story uh, with the kind of like meager love uh, love story between him and Harley Quinn where she like kisses him at the end and whatnot. Like it was kind of cute. It was kind of like a real kind of a real moment. Like it, it yeah. breathed a lot of life into the characters. Um and it just it it, it kept everything in balance, you know? Like there were some pretty fucking intense moments yeah, of the animated exactly. series. Um but I know exactly what you mean when it, it sort of had a more kind of humanizing effect on the character of Batman. Yeah. Like, I was watching, like, an old episode one day, and I had this, like, there was this old episode, there was this episode of Batman the Animated Series where, um, <clears throat> I think, like, Harley Quinn is, like, up for parole or something, or, yeah. and Batman is, like, hanging out with Harley Quinn all day, like, and she's, like, annoying the piss out of him and stuff. Yeah. But at the end, Batman saves the day, and he's, like, he's, like, really nice to her. He's not nice to her. He's stern and kind of mean and district, whatever, but he's not, like, beating the shit out of her, right? Yeah. And at the end of the day, like, and Batman saves a day or whatever, and then Harley Quinn is like, Well, gosh, Batman, you really a swell guy! <laughs> <laughs> and she, she's like, Why are you helping a, a no-good, beaten piece yeah. of shit like... And Batman's like, Batman's like, I understand. I had a bad day, too, once. And she's like, Nice guys like you shouldn't have bad days. And she, like, kisses yeah. Batman on the cheek. Yeah. And, and, like, the thought that I had is, like, you know... That's so such a perfect Batman moment because when yeah, you think about it, it really is. most most of Batman's villains are mentally ill. Yeah. So doesn't it make sense that if they're not posing an immediate threat, Batman would try to be nice to them? Yeah, exactly. exactly. But nowadays, nowadays you read a Batman comic and Batman's just beating the shit out of everyone. He's a violent psychopath who doesn't care yeah. about anything but killing people or beating yeah. people up. Okay, you read a Batman comic <laughs> now. You know, Harley Quinn isn't likable anymore. Harley Quinn's out there bombing children with fucking Game Boys yeah. and killing people. The, the Joker is, crazy. like, cutting his face off and torturing animals and shit. <laughs> it's fucking sick. They've ruined, they've completely broken the character and the universe by taking it so far. Yeah. I can't even read Batman comics anymore unless it's by, like, you know, like, the few people who still get the character, like Grant Morrison or, or Neil right. Gaiman. Those are, like, everyone else, like... They just write him like a fucking psychopath, and it takes me out of it completely. Yeah. Man, have you watched uh, the old Adam West series that much at all? Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, I, it's, I actually, it's funny. It's entertaining yeah, as fuck. I really like it um, because, like, it's there's so many stupid layers of the comedy. Like, it's it's almost like the perfect definition of, like, a campy show. Like, it has everything. The bright colors, the over-the-top acting, um, the ridiculous situations... It's fucking brilliant. Like, yeah. and it's like Cesar Romero is the Joker. Have you ever his seen face it? all white but not shaving his mustache? Like, it's it's it has everything. Um, <laughs> there's, there's one of my one of my favorite moments is like when um they like it's like a Batgirl episode and they're taking Batgirl back to the fucking Batcave, and, and Adam West is like, I hope you understand that we have to knock you out with this bat amnesia spray before we show you our secret hideouts or whatever. She's like. Well, of course, I understand Batman. You know, you know, I wouldn't want to compromise your uh, your security. So he like, sprays her and whatnot, and like, and like they sit her. You know, she passes out in the in the seat, and they sit her for a second. And Robin like looks over. He's like, you know, she's or you know, she's quite pretty when she sleeps. <laughs> like Batman says some cheesy thing like, uh, I was wondering when you were gonna notice that, Robin. That something <laughs> represents one of your final thrusts into manhood. <laughs> <or> something <laughs> like that. Time to teach like, you about rape, Robin. I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta find that clip somewhere. <laughs> I'm not doing it justice, but uh, so many ever seen, moments in that show. There's there's a more recent Batman cartoon called Brave and the Bold that came out. It. I think it got canceled a couple years ago. Oh, so but it was like, good. yeah, it was this cartoon <laughs> that like it really tried to it, it tried to take Batman back to like the '60s campy sort of feeling, oh, and right. it was really silly, and there was all kinds of ridiculous stuff going on. And he'd team up with other superheroes and stuff. Huh. 
But occasionally they'd have an episode that sort of touched on more serious stuff and showed like, yeah, we can do serious Batman stuff and still be entertaining and campy. Yeah. And it was a really good show, and it's like, never you seen know, it I love how the 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 way to get me to mellow out is to just mention Batman, and <laughs> like a, a happier train of thought. Yeah, man, this Batman is fucking awesome. That's what... And I think the animated series Batman will always be my favorite Batman. Of like all the incarnations of all the villains too. Like of all the incarnations of Mr. Freeze in, in the animated series, oh, that definitely. version of Mr. Freeze is my favorite. Um yeah. by far. And I think that's like again like an example of how the Mr. Freeze character simply should be. It was that it was horrible what they did tears, in, in like Batman. I still Robin. had tears anyway. to shed. Uh yeah, yeah. Like um Yeah, I, I just like he was, he was like a tragic character that you almost, you, like, yeah. you couldn't completely hate because you were almost yeah. on his side. That show had oh, such an man. influence yeah. on the Batman mythos. Just yeah, completely. It did. it's insane how there's like these characters that have been developed where you can kind of put new spins on them and get new things out of them. And sometimes it's like really good, and sometimes it's like yeah. Really bad. And that was like, that was sort of like this one of the things that like Grant Morrison touched on in his like big five year comics run. Mm. That was so good because. I've told you before about Grant Morrison and how I'm just totally fucking gay for him and how he's oh, yeah. one of my favorite artists. But, like, he sort of, like, touched on this idea of how, like, of how Batman is just, like, this mythological figure that could just be, like, reinterpreted in any setting. Mm-hmm. In any Because, I mean, he's he's the Zorro archetype, really. And it's just... Yep. Same thing with Superman. It's just... When you have a character that's that strong, you can change... Any minor detail you want, as long as yeah, you, you have a pretty broad keep, canvas. Because like he's like a billionaire person. playboy, and he yeah. has this technology like. And that's what I hate oh. about like modern comics and modern interpretations of the characters that they have all the surface superfluous stuff about the character, but yeah. they miss the core of it completely. They miss yeah. what makes it important. Yeah, you know one of my favorite episodes of the uh, animated series was the one with Bane. Do you remember that one? Uh, refresh me. Okay, that version of Bane freaked me the fuck out. Because, like, Bane in the new movie, he's all buff, and he's got the mask, and he has his, like, retarded voice. But, um, (laughs) and and I I, I liked it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, uh, I liked it. Bane in the animated series was fucking fucked up. Because he had this little dial on his wrist hooked up to this tube that plugged in the back of his brain. Like, he would turn it up, and he'd start getting, like, beefed up more and more. And, like, he was fucking destroying Batman. Um, but, like, like, he was getting so jacked up during the final fight. I guess, like, Batman, uh... He, like, threw some, like, fucking batarang or some, like, he poked his fucking thing on his wrist, and it turned up to max, and he couldn't turn it off, and he just starts, like, fucking freaking out and growing larger and larger, like, like, turn it off, turn it off. Um, but it was fucking, yeah. Accurate. There's this, there's this it, great, it uh, intense, man. If you watch, if you watch that scene to this day, it's fucking intense, and, like, as a little kid, you know when you're still little, and, like, certain things still yeah. made you afraid, or you'd have a bad dream from it? I remember seeing that, and that was one of those things that, like, made you feel uncomfortable and, like, scared and shit, like. There's this great comic from, like, I think the early 90s or around that time called Batman Venom where, like, Batman is, like, he gets his ass kicked or something. Yeah. And he realizes that, like, you know, he can't be young and strong forever and that is he eventually is going to get his ass kicked and die or something. So he starts taking Venom, like, which is the drug that Bane takes to make him fucking big and powerful. Yeah. And he starts taking it just, like, as a supplement to help him kick ass. And eventually he gets addicted to it. And he's always nice. using it. He's having, like, steroid mood swings. <laughs> and, it, and, and it does this Sounds thing. Like a great story, right? yeah. And eventually, like, Alfred, like, locks him in a room. And he has to go through, like, bat detox and stuff. <laughs> it's pretty fucking groovy. Robin has to hold his hand and shit. Yeah. But that fucking, like... And sponge baths. <laughs> that, but, like... Yeah, that, like, happy medium between, like, the serious side of the character and, like, the the human side and the campy side and like you know sort of like a uh what's the word taking in all of the different aspects of the character and yeah. finding like a happy medium yeah that's like sort of like fucking you know it's, yeah. it's a lot like <laughs> it, it, teen... it, it, it it perfects the character yeah the teen titans cartoon was like that too it's like there were episodes that were really campy and really silly and really hilarious, and then there, there were like really serious like arcs and stories mm-hmm. going on and like character. That that was that was also one of my favorite shows, and it's mm-hmm. like, it's kind of, in a way, the same way that I approach my comedy and my videos, because it's like, I try to be like as stupid as possible, but still within the realm of like intelligence and, and yeah, emotional and thought provoking yeah. or whatever. It's just. Do you remember the episode of the animated series um, where there was that like. There's that, like, little girl who's, like, an actor on some TV show, 
but uh, she had like some disease or something like that. So like she never yeah. up. She and, stayed like and, young and shit. That, oh, that and was the end was so sad. Man. Yeah, yeah, because it's like at the end she's like, why couldn't you just let me pretend? Yeah, yeah. She's she's like trapped. She's like trapped in this, you know, her her version of reality. Yeah, that show was just like amazingly heavy. At times. yeah, it was. It was. Fuck. Yeah. I think we grew up on that shit. And like the one with, the one uh, I think like the first Clayface episode where like at the end he loses control and he's like yeah. he's changing to all these different actors like out of control and he's yeah. like breaking down and shit. That was intense. She was fucking great. There was this one episode, um, where, uh, Robin meets this girl, and he becomes like really good friends with her, and she says he's that she's like Clayface's daughter or something or some yeah. shit. Then at the end, he finds out that she's not Clayface's daughter. She's a part of Clayface that broke off and became sentient. Oh. And at the end, Clayface like takes her back into himself, and she like oh, basically yeah, I dies. Oh remember that? Holy shit! Yeah. That is like. What the fuck? Who the fuck wrote that? Fucked, man. For kids. Yeah, that was fucked. Jesus. That fucked show. show. Fucking classic. Do you remember what, what uh, Ra's al Ghul was like in the animated series? Like, there's that episode where like he had discovered these like cools of some weird earth chemical around the earth that he called the Lazarus Pits. And there was like some there's some weirdness with them, but he was he had some plan to like yeah. basically like detonate them all at once and it would kill off like three billion people. And he was trying to, like, reset the human race because um, he thought, like, it got to a point that was beyond repair. And, like, his argument is almost convincing, <laughs> like, yeah. especially given the state of things today, um, where it's like, you know, Batman stops him, of course, but it's like, you know, that would cause untold pain and suffering. But, I mean, look at things. <laughs> maybe, yeah. that, maybe that would end up being better. Or maybe humans being stupid, we'd probably just do it all over again, do it, like, ten times worse, but still... This conversation is reminding me of like, of the end of the of the freezer episode of Clerks, where it's just like, and then we talked about old Happy Days episodes. Why yeah, yeah. Happy Days was a great show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, it's fucking. Did you ever watch uh, Justice League? Or, no. Because after Batman the Animated Series, like they kept that universe and that continuity going in like some of their later shows. Yeah. And, like, Justice League was, like, all the same voice actors and all the same characters from, like, all the old ones. And then after Justice League, I think it ended. But that show had some really good ones, too. Like, there was one where, like... Oh, did you ever see the Batman Beyond movie where, like, they find out, like, what happened to the Joker? And, like, what happened to... Oh, man, it was so cool. Like, they, like, do this big flashback to, like, Batman's, like, last fight with the Joker. And it's, like, the Joker, like, kidnaps Robin... And he, like, tortures him and brainwashes him to be, like, a mini Joker. Nice. And then at the end, like, Batman is, like, fighting the Joker. And, like, he, he like, reveals what he did to Robin. And, like, he tells, like, little Joker Robin to shoot Batman. And, like, little Robin is, like, laughing. And then he, like, shoots the Joker. And then he's, like, laughing, but he's also crying. And yep. the Joker's like, that's not funny. And then he dies. And it's fucking good stuff. Holy shit. I think maybe actually I have seen that one. Fucking classic. That, classic. I think definitely. It's reminding me of back in the days when the Disney afternoon used to be a thing. It used to be you get off school, and uh, around I think it was like two thirty or three thirty it started. There was always like one kind of like kind of shitty unpopular cartoon that only like poor kids liked, Pirates of Dark Water or some bullshit. Yeah. But then the good stuff would start. Oh, It'd be like oh, Chippendale oh, Rescue Rangers, uh, Ducktales. Um, I think it's like, like, Gummy Bears, Darkwing Duck, fucking Tailspin. Like, it kind of rotated through all these, like, classic Disney cartoons and whatnot. And, uh, fuck, man. Disney Afternoon, that was the fucking yeah. shit. Like, that was, you know, back before the fucking internet. Like, you couldn't just watch any fucking cartoon anytime you wanted. There wasn't any fucking DVD players. Nobody had just every episode of a TV show on their fucking tape. But there was just one time a day after school when you could see the best cartoons a kid could fucking watch all in a fucking row. Right after you got home from school. Disney afternoon was the fucking shit. Yeah. You know what I think would I, I really want to do at some point with my channel and my videos that I think would be a lot more fun for me than what I've been doing what? forever is I, I, I just want to like make videos like, hey, here's my like favorite episodes of this show or this show or yeah, here's man. my favorite promos by this wrestler. Just like really nice, like happy fucking videos like that. Yeah, but man. I can't do it because there's too many shitty things to talk about first. 
And there's yeah. too many goddamn pony episodes I have to get through. Yeah, but, like, fucking balance it out or something. Because, like, making videos about stuff you like is great. Yeah. Like, it's fun to fucking tear apart a movie and shit, but, like, it's also completely fun to be like, like hey, I'm really trying this to like fucking awesome. Everybody should play it. I'm really trying to keep myself right now to, like, I've got about, like, three or four more My Little Pony reviews in me. And, like, after that, I'm really trying to keep my schedule completely empty and just, like, just completely reevaluate my life and <laughs> charge and get everything, my, get, get my life back together and stop being fat. And just, like, just ignore YouTube for a while. I'd probably be good. Because I hate it. Because I hate my fans. I hate everything. And you know, I hate... They're making a live-action remake of the Gem and the Holograms cartoon. And uh, Awesome! Righteous! I can only expect that you would see it and do some sort of review on it. So, I hope that happens. I hope you do that. I want to. I want to fucking... It would be outrageous. Truly outrageous. Ah, uh, truly, truly, truly outrageous. Oh, man. I'm sorry. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. <laughs> Interesting stuff. Stay tuned for the next Tales of Interest. I'm going to put coffee into my Homer Simpson mug that shows a picture of him barbecuing a hot dog and eating a hamburger. Uh, which is a strange mug because you don't usually associate drinking coffee out of a mug at a barbecue. But I'm going to put coffee into that mug, heat it up, then come back and sit down. And that's what we're going to do. Woo! I'll be right back. Oh, boy. Now it's just me. And then there was one. One is the loneliest number that you'll ever do. It's just me now, and I gotta entertain you fucks all by myself. Not that you deserve it. Not that you honestly deserve my fucking time and attention and energy devoted to entertaining you. But here I am, fucking... Jesus Christ. You know, what the fuck am I doing with my life? I mean, nobody fucking cares. I don't get no respect. I just fucking get treated like a fucking nobody and a joke. I know I'm better than that. No one else fucking seems to realize it. No one else, everyone else's skull is too fucking thick to get it into their fucking brains. Do you people just listen to this shit and you go, oh, God, Jesse Wood, he's such a faggot. What's that dumb nigger talking about now? Well, I got news for you. You're, I'm not the dumb nigger. You're all the dumb niggers. All of y'all, motherfuckers. I don't even give a shit. I'm fucking cooler than you. My balls are 40 pounds each. Those motherfuckers are like boulders. You ain't got balls like mine. Ain't nobody got balls like mine. All you pussy phonies out there, you phony brony channels with your phony brony baloney. I'm sitting here Fuck. eating up my coffee, and all I hear from the kitchen is nigga this, pussy that, brony this. Yep, that's pretty much me in a <laughs> nutshell. <laughs> This kind of sucks because it's coffee from this morning, and I thought I was actually going to have more of it. And there's just like the bottom inch of it. And I saw a bunch of coffee grounds pour into it, so I'm going to have to deal with those during the last couple of sips. Now you guys know. Now you guys know the secret shame of Johnny O School drinking coffee at 1.17 in the morning. That Two can be as bad as one. This is number since the number one. It's true. It's true. I agree with that sentiment. You know what I'm kind of sad about is the fact that Simpsons is kind of still in the air. Yeah. I thought that, I'd get to that point. I don't like it. <laughs> I, I haven't seen really any of the new episodes. Maybe there's a few gems in there, but it, I'm kind of like proud mm. that it's just gone on this long. It's almost just like I have no interest in the new episodes anymore because the old ones are just good enough. And I just, I like the old ones so much. I just think, sure, do the series as long as you fucking can. Make it like a world record. Uh, longest. I think the show. last one I saw just, was like Lady Gaga was on it. Yeah. And it was just a bad episode. Like, not even like, oh, The Simpsons is bad and hot. It was just a bad yeah, episode. Yeah, like, the writers have changed so many times that it's now, like, there's completely new people working on it. And it's, you know, the same voice actors always. But, like, cer like certain writers really breathe all the life into, I would say, seasons, like, 5 to 15. Like, it, it's, I feel like... John Schwartzwelder... Uh, fucking when Conan O'Brien worked on it, like those were like the original glory days of the Simpsons. Yeah. I, I don't like how like the uh, 
sort of the uh, whole general tone or like of the series has like changed. I mean, like they sort of like have made Lisa the main character, uh. and they've turned her into like a liberal mouthpiece as opposed to just like a <laughs> kind of smart young girl who's surrounded by like a silly right, family. Right. I mean, like that. What that was. That's that was relatable, but now she's just. Hey everybody! Fucking veganism and and Gandhi and Lady she's, Gaga. She's kind of like that voice in the show instead of that character in the show. Just fucking annoying now. <laughs> then you've got fucking Lady Gaga. Remember when celebrities actually used to play characters on The Simpsons, the and not just was, themselves? Uh, best was when Michael Jackson was on the show and he played that like big like oh, fat white guy who I feel like we've had this Michael conversation Jackson. before. It was actually Michael Jackson's voice he did that, but because of some legal agreement, they couldn't put his name in the actual credits. What am I doing with my life? You should be watching more Simpsons. We've done, we've done like, so many of these podcasts, and it's just like my voice is just on the internet forever. <laughs> just being a faggot. And then it's just, I'm doomed. I'm doomed. You are doomed. Doomed to suffer. Welcome to my hell. Maybe I can pass on my Johnny O School curse to you. You can fucking deal with it for a while. I wouldn't even care. I'd be so happy to be rid of it. I'd be like, ha, fuck what's you, the, just. What's the Johnny Old School curse? Chronic bad luck. Complete yeah. instability. What? I've got my own curse for that. You keep yours. I don't want to keep mine. I want you to have it as well. I, I don't want, want yours. You I've got my own. Be better, because I'm a selfish fuck. I've got my own terrible life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I wish that we could all give our terrible lives to, like, one other person and just have him suffer for all of humanity, like Jesus. Yeah, kind of like the original Christmas, where, like, they would close down the courts and all the, like, fucking guards would go home, and you just do anything you wanted, like, completely outside the law. And they'd choose one person in the town where they'd fatten up, like, keep all these fucking curses on, and they'd, like, kill him at the end of the week. The world just isn't cool enough for that anymore. <laughs> Christmas sucks now. It's just like, hey, let's let's all just be happy and give each other presents there's no like you, you can't like fuck a guy like in the middle of walmart nowadays christmas is about oh i'm sorry the holidays are about yeah. everyone joining hands and sucking each other's dicks and yeah no no that's what the original christmas was no i mean in a bad way though yeah yeah well because nobody's there's no actual like issue going on during christmas anymore and i think we need to bring back the true spirit of christmas next year it should be about blowjobs it should be about like anal sex in public to be about just burning down a, a children's house. You know what I hate about my generation? Is I feel like we're in the last days of the Roman Empire, but, like, not enough into the last days of the Roman <laughs> Empire for it to be fun. Into the last days. Because it's like, if it were really the last days, and there would be anarchy, and everybody would be having fun. <laughs> but, like, it's we're, like, in an era where, like, we're just becoming aware of how fucked our society is, but, like, not enough to do anything about it. Yeah, we're kind of getting to that, like, really fucked up stage where, like, a lot of people are starting to realize like, what... I feel like by the time the revolution comes, I'm going to be 50 and too old to take part in it, and that just bums me out. I just hope that I can live long enough um, for there to be, like, a draft, but where our technology is so advanced that we're fighting over territory on the moon. Because regardless, if I'm, if, if I'm, like, 110 years old and they have, like, a draft to go fight in the moon war, I'm going to the fucking moon and I'm getting killed in the moon war. Because it's the yeah, coolest way nice. to die ever you being the first person to die in the war on the moon died in the moon wars man like star wars star wars is cool but that's that's way far off but the moon wars you never know that could be a potential within my lifetime if i have to go i'd love to go dying in the fucking moon wars man Better getting killed by a naked girl avalanche i'd pick either i just want to die stupidly <laughs> that's all i want <laughs> I want to live kind of stupid, punch. die stupid. <laughs> and I'm halfway there. You can be one of those people who, like, gets some little scratch on his finger when he, like, goes to a tropical country and it turns out to be, like, a horrible flesh-eating disease and, like, uh, six people in the entire world have ever died from it. You're, you're, just, you're that... Well, you're that I don't want to die of something gross. Okay. I want a clean, sterile, stupid death. <laughs> like, I just want to be swallowed whole by, like, a walking shark. A walking shark? With no teeth, because I don't want it to hurt. I see. I want it to swallow me whole, and then Wouldn't I want to wear the shark. Were, like in a shark stomach and just got slowly like, digested. Wouldn't I don't know. I gotta. Th I gotta think about it. Hmm. You know what I want? I want to summon a giant meteor to crash into the earth, and I want to stand at the center of the impact and absorb the life stream into myself. <laughs> and become a god among men. 
And I want to sail through the cosmos, devouring planets for all eternity. That's what I want. Sounds about right. What do you okay? What do you think the easiest way to die would be? Because like I think it'd probably just be like getting shot in the head or something. Uh, I don't know. I just want to. I just want to not die. <laughs> Ever. Yeah. I am eternal. All this pain is an illusion. Tool style. Did, did you ever? That's what I subscribe to. Have you ever seen a fucking Norm Macdonald stand up? Bit of it, or, yeah. Or, where he's just like, yeah, sometimes I think I just won't die. Uh, ever have yeah, that thought? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah. I, I, like, I never thought about what it that way, but yeah. It? There's no reason for it. It's a little pink boy for you guys. Man, my balls. Your balls? <sighs> Do you remember the show Rugrats? Of course, I remember Rugrats. It's my jam. Did you, ever, did you ever ever have any of the VHS tapes of Rugrats? Yep, I still do. I think they were did you all have orange. The VHS tape of the Rugrats rap. Yep. Rugrats. It's a Rugrats. It's a Rugrats rap. It's a Rugrats rap. I'm so happy that you Thanks. fucking know that reference because the only other person in the world who I know knows it is my fucking little brother that I used to watch that with, and I couldn't think of anyone in my circle of friends who would ever know that besides. You, possibly, and I'm well, so dude, fucking glad you Wait, did. well, how old is your brother? I don't fucking know. I, I, have, I, I have three you younger brothers, about... and they're all staggered in increments of about two or three years. I don't keep track of people's ages. I, I, I guarantee you don't brother. anyone don't... my age. They're, they're, all, they're all slightly younger than me. Anyone my age will yeah. know all that shit, because that's, that's, like that's like our Transformers. It's like, or our, it's never going to leave. Like, I know all that, all those old fucking... All the uh, Nick Nick tunes, Nick yep. Nickelodeon. Nick, 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 oh man, there's this picture on the internet of like Nickelodeon Studios, like then and now. Yeah. And like all the shit's been taken down, and it's just like a white corporate building now. Jeez. It's like the saddest thing ever. You know what was the biggest fucking bullshit toy? It was Nickelodeon Gak. You'd pay like seven, eight bucks in the. Oh, Gak is 80s. back. They brought it back. Oh my god. Yeah, you pay six, uh, you pay seven, eight bucks uh, for this fucking thing of Gak back in the '90s. So that's like fifteen dollars an hour, pretty much. Uh, there's just like brightly colored goo. You play with it for a week, it would dry up, and on the back it said like, "Oh, if your Gak dries up, just massage some water into it." That never worked. Your Gak always got fucked up. You'd have to buy more. And think of it, this is just like some sort of rubbery compound. They probably made, you could probably make like a ten thousand fucking liter gallon vat of this thing for like ten dollars, like. They're just they're just making goo and like selling it with marketing. And I love it. Yeah. I fucking loved Gak. I love the fucking accessories. I bought that fucking shit. But god damn it, they fucking took my money. Dude, I wanna rub Gak all over my body and also all over yeah. a female's body. Why? Well, I, I didn't do that, I was too young. You know what fucking pisses Are you ever me off? Too young to rub Gak over a female's clitoral area. Hey man. If you got if there's a female and something sockwood, I will rub it on her. I would hope so. Anything less would be uncivilized. Oh, that wanna... last sip of coffee, fuck. That was the one with the grounds in it. You know what I want to do with a girl? I want to get, like, a kiddie pool, and I want to oh, fill it with go. baby oil, and I just want to fucking wrestle her down to the mat in it. Even if she doesn't want to, I just... <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, it's fucking Festivus. Get in the kiddie pool, we're wrestling the baby oil. People would pay good money to see that. Hell yeah. <laughs> Gonna, okay, you know what fucking pisses me off? Yeah. I went I went to a, an open mic the other day. And it was it's this it's an open mic run by this uh this uh, creative alliance place, whatever, this group of people. They film everything, right? They post it on YouTube. Yeah. I went to an open mic, I did stand up for ten minutes and I blew the fucking doors off that place. Yeah. Now I'm sitting on my ass waiting for them to post it. So that I can rip it and post it on my channel. And those motherfuckers take too goddamn long to do anything. You can't trust anyone to do anything but yourself. I swear to God, if I don't get my goddamn stand-up footage so I can post that shit, I want it. I want it. <laughs> Fucking Johnny, I'm drunk. Are you? No. <laughs> Have you been drinking the wine? I love wine. I have wine for the very first time. Or not for the very first time. For the very first time in a long time. Just a couple of weeks ago. I want to, like, write a, like a, a rock ballad in, like, a Frenchman voice. Like, I only drink wine. <laughs> I don't drink beer. 
I don't drink rum. I only drink wine. Everything <laughs> else is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that working pretty well. I only drink wine. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Soak it into my baguette. Wine. Stripey shirt. Wine. Eiffel Tower cheese. Wine. 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 So sitting in the coffee shop this afternoon, old school laptop, home. playing a little Super Metroid. Beautiful experience. I got to do that some more. And it maybe it, I like I haven't played Super Metroid in a couple of years. Um, maybe not that long, but I haven't really sat down and played it properly. But um, I can kind of see now finally how you can actually get to the game fairly quickly. I never saw how those speed runs were possible where you get the best ending. You know, you don't have to beat the game in like six hours or some shit. But now I'm almost thinking like I could maybe do that. And I almost want to try to do it. I almost want to try to get that done. Finally beat Super Metroid and get the best ending. You never beat it before? No, I've beaten it tons of times, but I've never beaten it in under six hours. Because, like, I just like to run around that game and explore and experiment and hop on shit. Hell so yeah. I'll jump to get up here, or, you know, try to bomb this thing or try to get these secrets. And by the time I finish the game, it's like, you played the game for, like, 82 fucking hours. Probably more like 16 or something like that. But, um, but yeah, if you beat it quicker, then you get to see... Uh, Beautiful Samus around without her spacesuit on, her you know, black one piece or whatever. Ooh. That's the closest thing that a 15 year old kid in the 90s could get to seeing a naked woman, pretty much. Yeah. Other than like stealing like a Playboy from like an uncle or an older brother. I didn't see a naked woman until I was 35. <laughs> That's when I got out of the war. <laughs> Came home to a country I didn't recognize anymore. <laughs> Who really lost the war? <laughs> Who's Man. the real Viet Cong? Not hey, I. Hold on, you know what's great is that um, hey, my username on Reddit, like you know when you got you gotta like sign up for some site and you ha you want to make some username, that's like that's already taken. So you put like an underscore or something like that or a number in it. That's basically how my like username on Reddit is. But like the original version of my username, like, without any underscores, numbers, or shit like that, I looked up their comment history the other day for fun, and they have one post <coughs> saying something that's eerily similar to my life, except for one vitally critical detail. It, it was basically a post about this person saying, like, hey, I'm getting, like, married next year, and I've, like, never had sex before, and, like, I'm, like, 30 years old or something like that, and, um, you know, my wife has never had sex before either, and like that was their like their only post and it was like this it was like this 30 year old version getting a 30 year old virgin getting married with my with my same username and getting married <clears throat> around roughly the same time that i did at roughly the same age like given like a year or two so i had to fucking laugh my ass off at that because uh i don't know where i was going with that i'm fucking drunk you gotta you gotta track them down and become friends brothers old school brothers <laughs> I was just like, I wonder if I'm the first person to see this or if anyone else has seen that and just been like, oh, Johnny, you poor sap. <laughs> you poor fool. What are you doing, man? <laughs> <clears throat> man, speaking of a fucking marriage and relationships, um, former Mrs. Old School, who we've had on the podcast and who I get along fantastically with, um, so she started seeing a fellow recently. Hey. There was a... <laughs> But uh, there's, like, a friend of hers who I've always, I've always been pretty wary about because he's one of those, like, desperate, older, like, like I'll do anything to be with the girl, like, fucking oh. codependent types. And she probably doesn't see it quite as much as I do. But he said some, like, he said some crazy manipulative shit to her before. Like, he's never even met her. And he was, like, he was basically ready to, like, move to be closer. Oh, like, despite the fact that, yeah, like, it, it was... It was to that, and um, I guess she, I guess she mentioned something about like how she was like seeing a guy, and he like fucking flipped out. I was like, "You lied to me, and you're a terrible person." Like deleted her and shit like that. Like just the most like, like low level like fifteen year old high school fucking shit. And this guy is like, it's like twenty nine or some shit. But that that shit pisses me off. Like there's, <laughs> he doesn't even realize how manipulative he's, he's being. But. I always say to people, I'm like, you can really tell who your actual friends are, like, to, to girls. You can tell who your actual guy friends are if they're, like, legitimately happy if you're seeing somebody. Um, because chances are, ladies, half of your guy friends 
I mean, I'm half. I'm fucking drunk. I don't know what I'm saying. But chances are that a bunch of your guy friends probably like you. And, uh, they, like, and if they react that way, clearly they only have their own selfish motivations. And, um, and ladies, and it. if you don't, if, if you have a male friend that you would not fuck, then you are a bad person and you are not his <laughs> real friend. That's and right. And you are a manipulative hussy piece of shit. Of course, yeah. <laughs> That's the thing women need to understand. Is that we just want to fuck them all the time? No, they need to understand how horrible they are. So <laughs> we can learn how to act right. <laughs> act right? Yes. <laughs> I see. I don't know, I kind of like their crap sometimes. It makes life entertaining. As long as you don't take it too seriously. Nothing is entertaining. Everything's bad. <laughs> That's not true. Haven't you learned by now? I bet you could, you could watch an episode bad. of Full House and be somehow entertained by it. What? I said I bet you could watch an episode of Full House and be somehow entertained by it. Full House is different. <laughs> everywhere you go. Oh, wait. Everywhere you go. It's a full house. Everywhere you walk. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a little girl. <laughs> it's the Olsen twins. Look at them right there. Their underwear, they're pooping in their pants because the show begins. Now they're 25, they're both crackheads too. Everyone is a crackhead. How about you? Oh, yeah. the 90s. All right, I just kind of wish I could go back in time for like a day or two. I wish there was like a drug where it's just like you take it and you just like relive like a day of childhood. Now, that'd Go back be to one of the cool days where, drug. like, I was having a birthday party and we went to, like, fucking ar arcade or some shit and had, like, an all-nighter video game session. Fucking Super Nintendo with a bunch of wrecked yeah. games. And I was you know what I would do with that drug? I would go back to all the worst days of my life and I would do them differently. <laughs> and, then, and then I'd say to my friends, hey, remember that day when I totally did the right thing? And they were like, what are you talking about? That day was horrible. And I remember it's just a hallucination that I had and that I'm not really affecting the past. <laughs> And, then, and I realized that I've just reminded them of something dumb I've done for no reason, and I just slowly <laughs> back out of the room. <laughs> and they're like, oh yeah, I forgot, he did say that. Odd. That son of a bitch. This party cast is sponsored by time-traveling narcotics. He did patent that shit. Before the government horns in on it and starts doling it out to old people for <laughs> monthly payments of their social security... Banks, the Juden, I hate them. <laughs> the world, Israel shouldn't exist. I'm tired of this. Uh, yeah, Did you hear that pretty, Hitler is still alive? Days. Not still alive, but he died recently. What? Did you hear that whole conspiracy theory? What? That like they supposed they found documents that said, oh yeah, by the way, Hitler was living in like Brazil for like 60 years after World War II. We just yeah, forgot I, to tell I heard, everybody. Yeah, I heard I heard something about that. Um, Basically, saw a bunch of like like accounts that I guess were, which I don't disbelieve. The Freedom of Information Act. Yeah, I, I don't disbelieve it either. No, I, mean, like, I never, I never disbelieve a conspiracy. Especially when you when you consider like the whole like the whole killing of Osama bin Laden, like the amount of evidence that we were actually given on that. I could basically say that like, hey, I killed Osama bin Laden. Oh, really? Yeah, I was. Uh, we were out in this place and we saw Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden. We had to dump his body like into the water. Like Osama there's, bin Laden there's is like Obama in a wig and a fake beard. Yeah, yeah. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if he was, like, dead a long time ago, or, like, if he's maybe still alive and he's a different part of this and it was all just some sort of crazy fucking fabrication. Like, I don't I don't know what to fucking believe anymore. I just, I, I try to ignore most of that shit, because it just seems like a fucking distraction. It just makes me a, a fucking upset with the world. And then I fucking mope around, I feel like shit. I don't want to actually, like, do anything good or, like, do good things for people or with other people. So That's I try my to natural ignore, state. Like, shit. Oh, boy. What the fuck? But yeah, I guess where I was going with that is that, like, like if the whole thing with, like, the supposed killing of Osama bin Laden seems just kind of, like, loose, airy bullshit, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, you know, world enemy number one, Hitler, maybe there is, like, some crap, like, maybe maybe he escaped or something like that, but he's basically defeated anyways, and they're just like, well, maybe we can't catch him, but maybe we can just tell everyone, like, yeah, war's over, you know, we have a strategic land here, um, Hitler killed himself in some horrible way, and... Because we know that he's not he's not going to come back and try to you know start things again because he's kind of defeated. I mean like like if you if, if somebody escaped and you didn't know how to get him but he was basically done for, 
Like, what would you do? Just be like, he just escaped, but things are kind of good because then everyone would be like, well, oh shit, the, the guy's still out there somewhere. You know, like, if, if, he, if, if he fucking got away, but he was defeated, you might as well say, yeah, you fucking killed him. Because it, it has basically the same effect. Like, either way, Hitler was fucking defeated, so. I'm not, I'm not saying, like, I believe that theory. I'm just, like, playing the devil's advocate here and saying that I wouldn't not believe it if that's how it turned out to actually happen. It doesn't seem outside the realm of possibility to me. Yeah. The world is sad and horrible, and everything's awful. <laughs> you know what I saw the other day that, like, totally, like, killed my soul and ruined my whole week and made me Steve depressed? Was naked. That wouldn't make me depressed. <laughs> Not even How like... would you know it was him, though? Because you wouldn't be able to tell if it was him without the suspenders. Well, maybe he, he would just be, be like... another guy. He could be wearing sus suspenders to cross his patties. Oh. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, we were talking about My Little Pony oh, and stuff, and I was, I was telling you about Lauren Foss and how like her dreams were crushed by Hasbro and their corporate bullshit and everything, yeah. and how they ruined her life. Like, I, I was on YouTube and I saw this like documentary of like, like twenty years ago, like nineteen ninety four, of like the behind the scenes of this movie called Cats Don't Dance. Oh, yeah. Where like where yeah. like Lauren Foss was like nineteen and it was like her first movie that she was working on is yeah in animation. Yeah. And and like she's only in, in like a few scenes, but like it's like behind and they like catch this like this this young Lauren Foss working on her first animated movie and she's all young and beautiful and happy and like the world's in front of her. And yeah. it's just like and it's like everything that you read about her now is just like I was so fucking depressed today, just thinking about oh. how they, they took Twilight Sparkle from me and crushed my dreams. And I don't, oh. I don't like to talk about My Little Pony because it makes me sad. And oh. It's like, oh god, oh. the world was in oh. front of her. That is sad. It, and, and it's like I'm so, I'm like I'm so attached to this person now that I've never met because like she's <laughs> indirectly been such a huge part of my life. Yeah. It's like it's like it's like she's my mom. It's like watching video of my mother before like the cocaine <laughs> ruined her life. Oh, <laughs> like when, she, when she was young and beautiful. You should send her a message on Twitter and see if she wants to go out to dinner. Dude, I would so like have a drink with that woman. I'd buy her a drink. And I don't buy drinks for nobody. Let's see if she'll do it. I'd be like, hey, you did good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did good mama foss if she, if she doesn't reply then you should make a video of just what you would say if you had actually gone for drinks with her mm -hmm. i'd watch it that, i don't know that's like my dream is to like not to meet like my heroes but to actually hang out with them for just yeah. like a day yeah and have them not think that i'm a creepy fan that's my worst fear is like being to other people what they are to me yeah what I know my what fans mean. are to me just these leech fucking <laughs> parasitic pieces of shit, these Morlocks from beneath the earth crawling up into the light to fucking Fine. swarm you and ride your nuts into oblivion. <laughs> ride your nuts into oblivion. <laughs> ride you like a fucking mechanical bull. I'm just picturing the game Oblivion and some sort of mod where you could ride a giant nut sack instead of a horse. Because then you could, ride your, you could ride your nuts into oblivion. I want a, like, big cock and balls mechanical bowl in my room. <laughs> in your room instead of a bed? Mm -hmm. And, like, Park in place center. of my... Like, instead of my brony reviews, I just upload, like, ten-minute videos <laughs> of me writing it. <laughs> just, that'd be it, like, every single week. <laughs> New brony review! Woo-hoo! falling from the ceiling. Yeah, and at the end of the, at the, end of the ten minutes, it, it, it comes confetti. <laughs> it makes, like, a sound, like... I'd watch it. I'd, I'd definitely watch that. At least one episode. I'd kind of have to. Oh, wow. I wish I had more beer. You know what sucks? Yeah. I was working for, like, almost a month. And then because you started right before the fucking cutoff day bullshit, your first paycheck is, like, just over $100. And you work for, like, another two weeks. Oh, yeah. I hate making, like, shit. over 1000 you, you haven't seen anything from it yet. You've just been working and working and working and not seeing any fucking real money of it. I want to get more wine, but I'm afraid if I get more drunk, I won't be able to work keep working on the thing after this it's like there's a, there's an acceptable level of drunk that i can still edit i know what you mean i definitely know what you mean and it's like if i if i spell something wrong or fuck something up i'll just leave it in like hey, ha, ha, i was drunk i would give the fuck fuck yeah. you 
But I don't want to test like how I was pretty drunk one time when I edited the one video. I'm not an alcoholic. He fucking freaks out. Through every fucking thing I post, he must be drunk. He must be high. Fuck you. Suck a dick. Suck all. Suck my dick. I just assumed you're on ketamine most of the time. Ooh. You. Snorting K. Full time. I don't do. I don't have any bad habits. I. <laughs> I don't. It's fucking. It's ba -da -ba -ba -ba. fucking bullshit. It's bullshit that I'm as fat as I am because I have a fuck. I don't have bad habits. I shouldn't be like this. Really. Not fair. Really. Yes, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. The only times I drink is if I'm doing it for a video or if I'm talking to you. That makes you feel pretty good, actually. Or if I'm at a party and somebody challenges me and my royal authority. <laughs> then I have to, like, I have to down six drinks real quick and get into Super Saiyan mode. But of course. <laughs> so I can conquer my enemies and <laughs> spit on their whores. <laughs> you pick up that logger and all that yellow bile goes into your hair so it looks all golden like Super Saiyan Goku. Yeah. Stand on their chest and beat mine. My chest, not my dick. Also my dick. <laughs> Beat off in their chests. Beat off in their butts. Sounds like a good party. Hey, don't you mess with me, boy. I'll beat off in your butt. <laughs> I'll beat off in everybody's butt I've seen this week in the prison. Beating people butt from masturbating, <laughs> shooting skeet gum, shooting skeet scoot in the butts. I say we end the official party cast there because I want to go slice a potato and make up like fucking delicious homemade kind of fry things in the oven because I have a whole bunch of ketchup and I just want to yep. roast it up potatoes. And I need to fuck Stuff my couch it. and then go back to work. <laughs> Does your couch have a name? Because I'd like no. to think the name was Cinderella. <laughs> Cinderella. Yeah. That's a good name for a couch. It is. It's given me the look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cinderella the couch. <laughs> Cinderella the couch is hungry for cock. Run, run, run. Well, oh. guys, it sure has been nice having all five of you join us here on the Bits and Booze Party Cast. That's right. Be sure to to, to kill yourselves and... Yep. But and, subscribe before you kill yourselves and then yep. tell everyone else to subscribe. Because yep. apparently you can't actually get popular on YouTube unless you just beg people for that fucking shit. Yeah, so, so that's what I'm doing. Do that, and I'm also so, going to beg you to kill yourselves for the good of humanity and for the good of me. This has been the Bits and Booze Party Cast. Always look towards the stars, faggots. Smoke weed every day. No, don't do that. <laughs> the end. <laughs>